we doing, everybody? We are here to talk about the Boogeyman. So, uh, this is the only movie I went to see this week. Um, because everything else out there that I haven't seen has all been race swapped. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I frown on, fra on race swapping in any way or fashion. So, uh, yeah, so I left, was left with Boogie Mouse. Looking forward to it anyway. And, uh, yeah, so Spider-Verse came out. And, of course, Little Mermaid and uh, uh, Spider-Verse has uh, Spider-Woman in it. It was completely race swapped as well. So I will wait for that one until it comes out on streaming. So, anyway, but the Boogeyman is, of course, a uh, probably a remake of a remake of a remake. It uh, was by a short story by Stephen King. Uh, and it was written by the Quiet Place guys. So, uh, and the, the other writer is from Black Swan. So we had some really heavy hitters as far as writers were concerned. But I think the standout, uh, the director, uh, Rob Savage, I looked him up. I've never seen anything he's done. Uh, he's got a couple other horror things coming out. But I thought the directing was pretty good. But where the standout was in this was actually in the DP. Uh, the director of photography did a really good job. The use of lighting with this was the best part of the film. So uh, I recommend the film. If I compare it to other films like uh, Rise of the Evil Dead. Yep, Evil Dead, there you go. That was, uh, I like that one better. Uh, monster movies are okay. Um, as long as there's lore with it. So uh, let's talk about the acting first. I thought the acting was very, very good throughout. Uh, the characters have some good chemistry in there. Um, so Sophie Thatcher, I've not really seen anything she's done. She's done stuff, but I just nothing I've seen, uh, like Yellow Jackets and stuff like that. I've, I've never seen. Uh, she, she was one of the biker girls in uh, Book of Boba Fett, one of the, <laughs> the little speeder girls, but... Those people were all very forgettable. <laughs> and so we have really two Star Wars uh, alumni in this film because uh, Vivian uh, Lyra Blair was um, the young Princess Leia, of which I only saw uh, half the season of, um, uh, of Obi-Wan because halfway through it got so stupid that I just could not bear another minute of it and it wore, it messed with lore way too much so i i quit watching that uh but you know there's so many memes about the young uh princess leia running from these adults and they're all acting like a benny hill skit <laughs> and then they had the benny hill song behind that thankfully there was no running in this so she did a good job as far as being really the 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 protagonist of this because she's the first one that sees the creature and uh and tries to get everybody else to believe it uh even though really it's attached to the other sister um but again there's that that's that's my biggest complaint is that we don't hear any lore about the creature so i think the writers really dropped the ball on that and then the director so there's one scene so they their mother had died in a car crash we never get to see this car crash, and I know they were trying to limit the budget, uh, but it would be nice to have uh, have seen her in the car bleeding out or something like that because the dad can't talk about it. He, he Even though he's a psychiatrist, he's completely blanked on it um, and uh, and refuses to talk about it. So, that here, so he's kind of distancing himself from the kids, which I thought re that's really good stuff right there. And they're going to another psychiatrist, and of course, the other girl is, uh, uh, is Sawyer is the young girl's name, uh, is uh, afraid of the dark. You know, so she's afraid of the dark. She carries around this ball. And that ball, whoever came up with that idea, really, really good idea. It was used several times uh, and very, very effectively. I, uh, I really liked how they used the ball. Um, then uh, we have... A psychiatrist, again, good. Um, and the one who played Sadie, she ends up, of course, being the full protagonist. And, uh, and,
you know, we got some emotional performances out of them. Uh, her trying to take care of her sister now that her mother wasn't there. And, of course, missing her mother and having to be the woman of the house, uh, you know, and, and all that stuff. Um, I almost would have liked that the father, you know, picked up drinking a little bit. Um, I would have liked to almost seen him kind of go off the edge a little bit further. Uh, and and the girl's trying to bring him back, uh, you know. And we do get that, you know, towards the end. We do get, you know, them, you know, finding, breaking down those walls and finding each other and all that stuff. What I did like about the, the uh, oh, let's go back to one scene. So there's one scene where she, she's wearing the mother's dress, right? And there's really no spoilers. I'm not really giving any spoilers here. Uh, but she's wearing the mother's dress, and the dad was totally taken aback. Uh, but then she gets it kind of ruined. She has to get stuff on it uh, during the day, so it's in the dryer. And he pulls it out of the dryer, you know, and he holds it as if he's holding his wife. And right there, we should have had a flashback. Not Maybe not a full scene, but just a flash of images and... And it's just, it's so obvious that that's what should be there. And, you know, like him hugging her, her laughing, just a quick, you know, couple of seconds thing. And it would have added so much more to that scene, but we don't get it. So uh, I, and it's not like we, they don't cast a mother. They do because they have a scene where uh, she's watching herself as a baby on the, the video cam, uh, old video cam footage. And so they definitely cast the mother already. already. So they, it was no reason to not use her in a couple of scenes, you know. Uh, and maybe he didn't see her in the, uh, in, in the car accident, but it would have been nice to him imagine what her last moments would have been like. Um, so anyway, so I, I thought there was a few, so as far as the directing is the, the, there was a few character pieces that were missing and or was missing. And that was more, I think the writers than the director, but the director could have said, Hey, I need to the writers. Hey, I need some kind of lore here. You know, I need, I need for us to, uh, you know, figure something out. And even, uh, rise of uh, the evil dead you know has the necronomicon and you know whether we buy that lore or not but there was some lore in there you know so you know we get some of that and i, I really think when it comes to ancient evil this thing was supposed to be around since like the dawn of time so there was plenty of things for us to play with and it just it just isn't there so it's the so the, the thing's got a, a blank slate and there was one cool so it looks like a little bit like a spider you know it's got four legs and you know, it runs around, but, uh, it's, uh, it's got when, when, when it opens his mouth, there are human hands that come out of the mouth, like a tongue. I thought that was really cool. That, that was really cool. And I think, I wish there was more of that, uh, because, uh, that's really, had never been done before. And I really like that. Um, so again, this is going to be a pretty short one because uh, there isn't really much for uh, for me to say. Uh, so the yeah, the the Chris Med, uh, Messina uh, who plays the dad in this, uh, if you saw Air, you've seen him this year already because he plays uh, Michael Jordan's agent. Uh, so <laughs> he's uh, he's another good one. Uh, but yeah, it was, so the movie's decent. I, I wouldn't say the movie's great. The movie's not great. It's not up here. It's enjoyable while you're sitting there. It has some memorable moments. So it's good. That's as far as it goes. It's good. Uh, but I do recommend it if you like horror movies. Uh, you know, I walked around to different theaters once I finished that when I always do that. I, I walk around from theater to theater and see what's playing and see, you know, how many people are in what. And uh, except for Fast, Fear, uh, Fast X, which was, uh, it was a, this is a Thursday night I went to. So except for Fast X, Fast X only had like a half a theater. But Spider-Verse was playing in two or three different theaters, and they were all full. Uh, I only saw a Little Mermaid in one theater, and it was full, but it was like I only saw it in one theater. I think there was one more theater I could have been in, uh, but Spider-Verse was already pushing it out. And, uh, 
And yeah, so most of the theaters I saw were all full. Even that uh, that one, the machine with uh, uh, with Mark Hamill, that even that one was full. But uh, but yeah, so I, I watched a couple of scenes of Spider Verse, and I could tell it really wasn't for me um, because the it just looked really weird. It just the uh, animation was just a little bit too weird for me. So I I liked the first one, but this one looked it looked like they pushed the envelope. Uh, a little bit too far for me, but uh, that's uh, let's. I, I gauge this as a seven, a seven out of ten. And uh, so, let me know if you've seen it, what you thought of it. Did you think there was some pieces missing? And I think that's what's taken those couple of points down for me. Uh, is is more of the fact that there are just there just feels like there are pieces missing of it. It feels like we're coming into a middle of a story. Um, when there is more backstory for them to tell. I think that's the biggest problem with this, but the, the actors and the DP, uh, you know, really knocked out the park. Um, and the use of lighting with the candles, with the flashing lights, with the ball, all that stuff was really good. Uh, and even the, uh, even the lighter at the end, I thought was done, done pretty well. So anyway, that was, uh, that's it for me for, uh, for the boogeyman. And as far as uh, uh, Destiny Aurora, we are hitting goal, but uh, I'd like to—I'd still like to push forward. I'm—I uh, got a few more marketing things that I'm doing to try to help us push. And there's just a lot of people uh, that have are following it, but hasn't haven't uh, pledged yet. So we could have a big couple of last couple of days. I guess we'll find out. We have ten days to go. Uh, so we did get the. Uh, the hard cover in for uh, Iron Witch. I have been fulfilling the soft covers already. These are on order now. This was my test copy, and the other copies are on order. So as soon as I get those in, I'll start um, pushing those out. And um, but the uh, I've already fulfilled uh, twenty, and I'm going to fulfill. I think I have forty six for the soft covers, and uh, I should have a bunch more out this weekend. Uh, and then when the hard covers come in, uh, I have uh, like three Destiny Aurora's uh, novels that need to be printed and things to that effect. So, so there's extra a few things that I have to put in there. Uh, but anyway, go to the Kickstarter. If you haven't pledged, uh, go ahead and pledge. Let's get that thing up. Immerse yourself in the wildly successful Destiny Aurora universe. The release of the audiobook version marks the newest addition to the franchise. Follow the thrilling adventures of the starship Destiny Aurora and its crew as they hunt for the alien assassin who murdered Jace Carver's wife. Their epic confrontation will change Jace's life forever and keep readers guessing till the end. Go to the link below and listen to the first chapter absolutely free subscribe to my channel please do so uh i'm trying to get up to you know at 5 000 if i can you know we're at like 2500 and of course we do movie reviews do we do comic reviews uh we do board game playthroughs uh so we have a little bit of everything and uh and i try to post uh you know three four times a week so and i did it out uh out of uh theater review as well uh, and, uh, and Lords of LA is next. We have only a few, uh, uh, a few pages left to do. And, uh, I'm going to, as soon as this one ends and I can get a little break, I'm going to launch that one. I know everybody's kind of excited about that one because the first one, uh, everybody liked the first one. So, and I kind of, I don't want to pause too far in between the, the releasing of issues. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate, you know, all of uh, my subscribers and, uh, if you, do want me to see a particular movie I want to review on, then uh, let me know. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye.